Welcome to another edition of Rams Up Roundtable. I'm Tom, your host at Rams Beat on X, joined by my Rams Up podcast co-host Mark and regular guests Ian and Paul. What's going on, guys? Ready to talk about offense tonight? It's going to be more fun than the last one, that's for sure. <laughs> yep, much <laughs> Light up the scoreboard, baby. Yeah, yeah, light up the scoreboard. Right. That's right. Yeah, this is uh, it's looking looking pretty good so far, but uh, there are some needs. And so we're going to break it all down for everybody. Uh, we're going to dive right in here. And so I'm going to uh, go through these position groups, give a quick fire question to each of you, and then we'll talk about the bigger picture for the position group um, afterwards. So we'll start with quarterback and I'm going to start with Mark. Does Stetson Bennett come back? better than ever, recovered from whatever his malady was, in shape and ready to be, uh, give the pro promise to Rams fans uh, that, that we had when he was drafted in the fourth round last year. Well, I don't have any inside intel on the topic, but I'm guessing he is. I think, I'm, think he's, I'm thinking he's going to be ready. Uh, again, just guessing here, but you know, there are some good reports we saw that he was working out and looked like he was in good shape. And uh, why not? Why not? He's got a, a potential NFL career staring in his face. Um, let's hope he gets gets it together and is our backup quarterback weeks one and two. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, with Jimmy G being uh, suspended for weeks. Oh, one I forgot and two, about so. Jimmy G being a dummy. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, he also, he also, he lost a bit. I, I still think game, that you know. uh, hopefully uh, this, it, it's okay to add this. I still think it's very possible the Rams draft a quarterback, but that's all I'll say about mm -hmm. that. Oh, oh, we're jumping ahead. Okay, so, um, <laughs> okay, so uh, Ian, if yeah. Jimmy G had to fill in for staff for you know your typical staff got injured, let's call it two to three games. That's that's God, been, that that's been standard operating for, you know, procedure for Stafford, right? Yeah, um, I guess so. And so, you know, one way or another, you know, good line, bad line, whatever it is, that's kind of been the MO. So uh, if he if Jimmy G had to fill in for staff for two or three games, how are we looking? I think I think he could he could be serviceable and I think he could do a decent job at the minimum, truthfully. Let's just be honest with ourselves, you know, he understands this version of the Mike Shanahan offense, right? The core of it, which Sean and Kyle, the 49ers run. Obviously, they have their varying versions. Now, we're kind of more 49er-esque now, running a lot of the gap stuff. But the terminology is the same. The, uh, the instructions of where to go on your reads are the same. And he was in that, you know, that was the best Jimmy ever looked was under Kyle in that style of offense. No shocker that he chose here out of all the spots to be able to hopefully replicate that. So I think, would he be this Pro Bowl-level quarterback? No. But would he be serviceable? Would he be better than Brett Rippon or Stetson Bennett we saw last year? <laughs> yes. Would he be, would he be, would yes. he be better than Carson Wentz? <laughs> I, I think – and that's still, that still bothers me, truthfully, because Carson didn't get a lot of money. <laughs> but, you know, based off what Coach McVay said, Les Snead have said that Jimmy could run this offense – more seamlessly than Carson. That's their own words. They said it. Yeah. So I do tend to, I do, and I do tend to believe that truthfully. But if Carson was around a little bit longer, I think he could have learned this offense. So that still pisses me off. And I know Paul bothers him equally. And I'm sure you guys deep down somewhere. But yeah, yeah to, your, was, to answer it, long story short, I think Jimmy could play. I think he could throw some touchdowns. And it's just, can you not do 49er Jimmy Garoppolo end of game things? That's really what we're trying to avoid, right? Yeah, yeah, a dumb yeah, interception, just, a bad read here and there. That's what Kyle begged him to do, pegged him not to do for <laughs> every before every game. Just yeah. stay within the playbook. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, Paul, how many more years does uh, our boy staff have in him? How many more NFL seasons? Um, high quality, three. Three more this year and two more. Yep, wow, absolutely. that's interesting. So. Yeah, and I will, yeah. and, and I'll put a, I'll put a comment right behind it. Uh, I said it in uh, two podcasts ago. I said the Rams and the coaching staff have to do a better job. Uh, Mark and I were talking about this. They have to do a better job. So look, Donald said he was burnt out. 
Look what they've done to Cooper Cup. Right, he's a shell of his former self. Hopefully, he comes back strong. They have to do a better job of protecting their star players, uh, allowing them to have longe- longevity in this league. Um, that's been a major failing on their part. And listen, look, great coaching staff, but that is something that has been glaring. We saw it last year when he got rocked against Stafford. I mean, they, they can't keep yeah. subjecting him to that abuse. They spent a lot of money in this O line, you know, and listen, you know, it was a smart move on their part. But the bottom line is you have to know how to manage the game and make sure that Optimus 9 is in optimal condition come playoff time. And he could easily light it up for another three years. Easily. No question in my it. mind. I love it. That's, that's I think so, that's too. It. Yeah. Um, so now let's get into the bigger picture. And you guys just go ahead and have at it, have a conversation about it. So yeah. do we, you know, do we draft? This is a very t- uh, a quarterback heavy draft, right? Some people saying it's almost certainly three quarterbacks going in the top three, maybe four in the top four, maybe yeah. six in the first round. Um, and that means there's some other qu- quarterbacks after that, right? So yeah. do the Rams draft a quarterback in this draft? And if so, where? Um, and, you know, how are we feeling about our depth at this point? Go ahead, lead well, off, Mark. I, I can go first, and, and it, it all depends on two things. It depends on two things that we don't have the answer to, um, how they feel about Stetson Bennett. And how many, if they're going to trade up, if they're going to trade up in this draft, I don't think they're drafting a quarterback. They're going to have fewer draft picks and more needs than they have draft picks, and they will not draft a quarterback. But my guess would be if they if they stick with 11 picks and they roll with 11 picks or even add a couple picks, I think they'll find, uh, they'll take a shot at a guy with the potential to be a backup quarterback. Gotcha. I have no idea. Kind of a later, later round or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I, I have no idea who that might be. I know people have talked about Spencer Rattler, but that'd probably take a, a, a fourth round pick, third or fourth round pick, I think, if yeah. not higher. Uh, but there's some other guys. Uh, the Florida State guy, I know Paul really likes. He could probably be had in the sixth round, I think. Um, but that's my take on it right now. What do you guys think, Paul? Ian? Go ahead. Hey, Paul. Go ahead. Good, dude. All right, all right. Well, look at it. I agree with Mark's points about it depends on the flow of where we're going to allocate our resources. And I think at the end of this offensive segment here, talking about every group, there's some things that are interesting that have been coming out this last you know day and a half. But in terms of drafting the QB, it's not impossible, truthfully. Jimmy's on a one-year deal. Stetson, we don't know. Look, at it. we've talked about it. There was some, obviously, personal things going on. And who knows how that's going to turn out and then how are we going to know that he's going to be any good on the field too. Let's just be honest. It was a disaster when we saw him play last year in the preseason against backups. It just was Garoppolo hitting the latter part of his career. We don't know if they're going to want to keep paying him premium backup money, right? To stay on this team for the foreseeable future. Matthew Stafford, the injury thing we just talked about, you know, dresser win is I think is part of his roster, but that's more of a camp arm. It feels like, right. Let's help out a dude who's, you know, going to play in preseason games and we can maybe help him get signed to other teams or maybe he's a practice squad candidate like before. But I think if they do draft a quarterback, it's got to be round four and below for me. It can't be rounds one, two, or three. Those are two valuable, even round four and five, you can consider valuable for us, right? Because we hit on those rounds, ironically, more than a lot of squads do in the NFL. So it's got to be round four below minimum. It can't be rounds one, two, or three because of the potential starters in those rounds like we always seem to find and you know teams franchises value so would it be a spencer rattler round four and below i'm not a, a totally against that he's got a lot of talent would it be the tennessee quarterback uh what's his name joe milton who's got a mega arm and we see him on the highlight films for combine and even his draft stuff guys who have potential but you're not investing a whole lot of draft capital into would those draft picks make me mad truthfully no, as long as they are rounds four and below, preferably probably round six and seven, if we're just being real. But those two quarterbacks I just named, Rattler and Milton, Carolina and Tennessee, they have too much talent to be that low, truthfully. They're probably going to go rounds three and four anyway. But that's the only scenario that I'd be okay with. Uh, how about you, Tom? Shoot. So um, I think the Rams, 
Uh, I think the Rams have to do it. First, they have to decide, you know, how long they want to commit to Optimus 9. Once they decide that, I think that'll clarify how they're going to approach the quarterback scenario. In this draft, Mark Mark knows, I'm, I'm all in on Jordan Travis. I think that as a late-round pick, you put that kid on the roster, man, and you just let him develop. And, you know, I think that's like a really uh, effective approach in this day and age. Is, you know, every year you look for like a quarterback prospect. You bring them in, see what they got, let them spend a, uh, a year or two, see, you know, see how they develop, how they respond to NFL coaching. I mean, this kid's got uber talent. I mean, it's beyond words. And what he did at Florida State, man, he took them to an undefeated record before, obviously, before that gruesome injury. So um, yeah. I think the leadership capacity and, you know, um, he hits the weight room, that arm is going to develop even more. Yeah. And he's electric in terms of, you know, he's a modern day quarterback, man. He's mobile, but he does, you know, Mark and I were talking about, it. I said, the one thing that stands out for me, he's not the type of quarterback that when he gets flushed out, he's just running because that's the only thing he can do. He's running to buy time and make plays downfield. That's like the one thing that stands out for me. Every year you could get a prospect like that and, or let them develop, let Bennett and him, you know, fight it out. Let the two of them fight it out. Um, and I think, you know, the Garoppolo signing aside, which I'm never going to agree with. I don't care what it, I don't care what anyone says. I'm never going to agree with that one, <laughs> but every year, I think the Rams should take that carpe diem approach. You never know who gets released, who a team gives up on early, right? We talked about mm -hmm. that before. That's a common trend in the NFL. So you, you look at the situation with Carson Wentz, man, that was a dream scenario for the Rams to get him like the way they got him and for that, uh, for that price. Um, I still think they should have brought him back. I mean, I agree with Ian. I'm like, when I saw the signing, I was like, wait, he just signed for this. That wouldn't have blown up the cap. What are you guys kidding me? Nice. And he would have been not only a great insurance policy, but I think he would have just fit the roster so much better. But, you know, using that Carson Wentz uh, scenario, that could literally happen every year. You could, you know, if you're patient, see what's out there, you know, and take that best part. And you never see it. You never know how it develops. You never know how it develops. You know, the number of teams that have won a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback in play. Think about it. It's impressive. That is an impressive list. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, yeah. so nobody's in favor of drafting our next franchise quarterback yeah. with our first pick. We'll just we'll just sum it up that way. Oh, I'll be yeah. a, I'll be upset, dude. I'll yeah, be no, upset. I, I, I like Penix. I like Penix, right? I we all probably mutually yeah. agree pretty much that he's the third best quarterback. But we're well, in the pool, uh, or the, I think so. I think we've talked about it. I think he's May. behind. Uh, behind. Um, He's behind uh, Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, in my opinion. My wow, opinion, interesting. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, I think this is, if he's the third best, he's certainly not going to last in 19, right? I mean, the, no, he'd have, but he'd even, have, he'd have but to even be the then, fifth best, yeah. Yeah, but even then, I would just, even then, it's more like, why are we pulling a Packers, Rodgers, Jordan Love situation where that capital could be used to try to win a championship? Like, what are we exactly. doing? Exactly. Anyway, yeah. And I'm with you. Okay, let's move on to tight end. So throwing up the, uh, the uh, depth chart here. So Higby and um, Hunter Long are on the uh, IR, right? Well, who knows when they come back? Higby's his injury seems a little bit longer than Long. But it seems Long, serious, though, Tom, yeah, truthfully, man. Yeah. Long does? Yeah. So both yeah. those guys are, are pretty pretty well out. And um, yeah. and so, yeah, obviously the Rams bring in one of their bigger free agent signings um, is Kobe Parkinson, right? And so, yeah. we, you know, he's huge, uh, big guy, and he can block. Uh, he can – Hopefully they'll bring him into the uh, into the passing game more than he has been in the past, and yeah. you know certainly hopefully we have a, a legitimate uh, red zone threat like unlike we, we've had from tight ends recently. Higby, you know, for all of his yeah. positives, was pretty poor in the red zone for some reason. So hopefully Parkinson adds that, and then everybody's we're all excited about Davis Allen, you know, in prior conversations. So yeah, you know, I, I mean, let's just jump right. No no specific questions on this group, but. I mean, how do we feel? Do we do we draft another one, or do we, you know, if so, where? How do we feel about going into the season with, you know, basically we're just assume we're going to run with Parkinson and uh, Parkinson and Allen. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, I'll start. I'll start it off. So I was surprised about the Parkinson signing because everything we had right. seen from Allen, I thought they were going to go all in on Allen and then back him up. You know, like uh, you know, we were. Uh, uh, I think Mark uh, and I were doing a mock draft, and I had joked that Seattle had released all their tight ends. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't think they were going to sign Parkinson. I thought they were going to sign the other guy. I always forget his name because he was a great blocker. Um, but in, in this case, um, I think it is a good fit. I think he is a really good fit. He's a, he's a solid blocker. He's untapped potential in the red zone. Um, I think the combination of he and Allen. I think over the last five years, there's been so many great developmental tight ends to come out of the draft. It just makes sense to draft a, a tight end and to fill up that room. Uh, you know, my personal favorite, uh, Mark, Mark, and I know uh, we've been talking about these two in particular, Jared Wiley and uh, Spam Ford out of Minnesota, University of Minnesota. I think those two would be perfect fits for the Rams. Um, I'm hoping both Higby and Long come back healthy because you know they're just they're just Rams. You know they're just I mean, and and Mark said it best that 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 Long injury. I think we all just shook our heads and said, "Oh man, what what more could happen to this kid?" Right? He had, he was like in a perfect situation with the Rams. But um, I think this is a perfect spot to draft a nice developmental tight end and bring him in just to balance out that room. Uh, I agree with Ian. I think that Higby's injury is more serious than they're letting on. You know, you don't spend that kind of money at tight end, as particularly a sort of unproven tight end, if you weren't um, seriously considering the fact that Higby may, may not make it back. So that's my take on it. Yeah, and – you know, but we got to think about, uh, well, anyway, how do you, I mean, we'll, we'll just jump around here and then we'll talk about the bigger picture for a few minutes. But uh, Ian, how do we feel about Parkinson and Allen um, holding down the fort here? Do Or do we need more? Yeah. Help? Yeah. I like Davis Allen last year when he stepped in. Was it perfect in the blocking surface of what they were asking him? Because obviously, look at man, it's a lot. Gap, zone, combo blocks. We ask our tight ends to do a lot, man. And for him to be a really good, reliable receiving threat in multiple games when Higby was kind of banged up, when he was targeted, and I think all the big games, I was happy. Now, like Paul, I was expecting him to be the guy uh, in place of Tyler, and we'd maybe draft or sign somebody else cheap. So I, he's still going to play a ton, I think. And now in terms of Colby, he's super familiar with this offense, speaking about familiarity about this Shanahan-esque offense. You know, he's up in Seattle with Shane Waldron, our old coach, who was their coordinator for many years. So he knows his offense like the back of his hand. This is not some learning curve that he's going to have to be on to be able to learn all those things on the blocking surface and even in the passing game. Now, he's a big son of a gun. He is. He may not be this big, bulky Mark Andrews type or Njoku where he's just like, damn, what a huge human being. Just, you know mass wise but he's tall and big in his own right i mean he looked like he'd be an nba player in an alternate life right and for him to not get targeted a ton in seattle scheme was puzzling but every time he was targeted he was making good catches and honestly the blocking is what he made his you know his name and what got him this contract truthfully he was burying people in the dirt stealing off edges perfectly lead blocking on power tosses and outside zones so I think he's going to be incredibly valuable. And then Stafford wants to have a damn red zone guy. My goodness, that's where he made all his money in Detroit with all the different receivers he had there. You know, Higby a couple times here and there. We tried to do it with Allen Robinson. That didn't work. We tried it with, with Demarcus Robinson a few times when he get, got his starts. It didn't work out too great either. So I think he's going to be money on any type of red zone pass play because he's just taller than everybody and he's got great hands. And then, obviously, you can do the heavy play action with him, right, 11 or 12 personnel, and he'll sell it well and get open. So I think the signing is going to end up being solid at the minimum. He'll be a contributor. I don't know how many yards or touchdowns he's going to have. Hopefully, it's a good amount. But based off the money he got, I mean, Higby's knee injury is serious. There's just no way around it, and we just yeah. paid him too. So that's unfortunate. But I like those one. I like the one and two and then – the one A, one B potential whenever Higby comes back, because that'd be a great one, two, three right there. But for now, Parkinson and Allen, they'll do the job for me. And we'll see what happens though. Hey. The yeah, jump Mark ball, the jump ball potential between Davis Allen and, and Parkinson is just off the charts. Love I really it. hope I really hope they it. utilize it. We need it. We need it. OBJ was the last guy to pull that off consistently, and we won a championship because of it. Shoot. <laughs> I, think, Ron, I think I can see some 12 personnel in our future kind of on the 10-yard uh -huh. line. And, and We've and, been saying that since McVeigh has been here. He's I not here. Yeah. <laughs> well, he finally, finally got his boys. You know, we'll see. I mean, um, yeah, we'll anyway, see. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bryson Hopkins and, and Tyler Higby were not the size of Davis Allen and Kobe Parkinson. So hopefully we'll, yeah. uh, we'll see. But um, Mark, the Rams 
often carried three tight ends. Um, uh, sometimes they carry two on their 53-man roster. But, I mean, can they afford to go into this this season without, you know, maybe obviously there's always the unrestricted guys that come in and we get those guys on the practice squad and whatnot. But can they afford to go into the season with two healthy, two, only two healthy tight ends? No, I think they need a third guy. And remember, they do have two guys yeah. that are um, on futures contracts. Not sure how they feel about them. I think they'll add a, a, a tight end to the 53-man roster. I think they need to because it's such an important part of this offense. I just wanted to add uh, one thing about something uh, to note about Davis Allen that maybe we have forgotten about. You know, he is just a high character class guy to have on this roster as well. If I remember co correctly, the Clemson coach, I think he said that at when Davis Allen was drafted, he was his favorite player ever at the University of Clemson. So wow. that that's something. And then and Ian touched on it, you know, and Tom, you know, the twelve the twelve personnel with this interior offensive line and you run oh. those two tight ends and Puka and Cooper out there. If you decide to run the ball, uh, well, uh I'm okay with that. <laughs> if you want to chuck one up to Colby, I'm okay with that too. It just man you could really play some smash mouth football with that offensive line and those two wide receivers and two tight ends. Yeah. I like that. Good stuff. Okay. Moving on to running back. Uh, so, so this depth chart here, Tyron Williams, Ronnie Rivers and Zach Evans. So, uh, Paul, I mean, does, let me ask you this. Does Kyron stay healthy this year? Does, you know, and, and not only from the standpoint of, you know, because he's been injury prone, but also does yeah. McVeigh, you know, McVeigh loves to run his running backs into the ground. And, uh, you know, that whole that whole coaching tree, they love to run all their players into the ground. And uh, so does McVeigh yeah. take a little bit of a load off Kyron? He's not really the, you know, atypical number one back, right? He only came into this league as a blocking third down receiving back, right? Does McMay run him into the ground, given how productive he's he's been, and uh, right now on our on our depth chart, a lack of depth, or does McMay go easy and play the long game with Kyron? So, I mean, the track record for running backs under McMay has not been uh, stellar. That's for sure. <laughs> Just ask Cam <Kevin. laughs> Yeah, and Todd Gurley, Gurley, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah. uh, so uh, and Sony Michelle, right? Shout out so, to Sony. He was awesome for us. He was the man. Underrated. Like they yeah. should have brought him back immediately. But Iron Kyron. Um, so let's go reverse. So Zach Evans has completed his red shirt year under the Rams, <laughs> as McVay always does with, with the younger players. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get a lot more of Zach Evans this year. We might even see him on kickoff returns, hopefully, or something like that. Kid is definitely one of Mark's favorites. I know when they drafted him, kid is explosive. Uh, kid is tough as nails. You know, Rivers really impressed me last year, too. I mean, he showed a lot of moxie. I mean, for me, I've always been surprised that the Rams have not brought in that, like, one sledgehammer back that they could use for, like, tough yardage situations, red zone scenarios. Uh, Iron Kyron has shown in the red zone that he is straight money. You give him the rock, it's in. You, and that was one thing that really stood out for me about him uh, last year. And Paul, year. and Paul, why, why we couldn't do that in the playoff game? My goodness, it was maybe yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly my point. So I think, for, but you have to keep him fresh. They, I mean, that's a lot of carries for any running back. You need to have a two-headed, three-headed monster. Absolutely. Listen, look at the interior of that Ram line. If you're not going to run the ball, then you're wasting a ton of cash. So I really think. Within this group of three, um, and it's going to be interesting how they work it out. Um, I know. I think Rolls Royce signed with a different team this uh, just this morning. Yeah, Cowboys um, with the Cowboys, right? Oh, so, Cowboys. Oh. <laughs> you know, this I got to tell you, this draft is loaded with late round running backs, man. And I'm I'm partial to that kid, uh, Mel Melton out of Georgia, man. I think that kid is a beast, and will just hammer defenses and would be a perfect compliment to Kyron. Uh, yeah. But there are a lot of other like sleeper running backs. Uh, I was just talking to the guys today, Ram Nation, Dylan Lauby, uh, the kid from uh, out here on Long Island. 
uh, played for New Hampshire, mm-hmm. who can out of the backfield is just unstoppable, just a pass catching monster, man. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to go. I would go young here, uh, but you never know. Um, the Rams do really well after this draft, and that's where I think a lot of people are sort of getting caught up, is that the Rams are going to play phase two and phase three of free agency perfectly. That's where they that's where they live and breathe. Phase two and phase three of free agency. And I can see a low-cost veteran running back coming in to spell Kyron Williams. If they're smart, keep this kid healthy. Optimus 9, Iron Kyron healthy in the playoffs, worth its weight in gold. But they gotta, they got to improve this running back room. These two kids are great, no question about it, bang for the buck. However, when push comes to shove, you have to be able to give the, give the rock to somebody who's done it before. That's just my opinion behind Iron Kyron. Gotcha. And, Mark, is Rivers a, like a legit – number two running back in this league? I think he is from what I've seen. Um, I, I We barely missed a beat with him in there. I, I'm really happy with him as a backup running back. Um, yeah. Answer emphatic yes emphatic on that question. Yes. Okay. And, um, and Ian, does yes. Zach Evans have a breakout year after almost kind of like a red shirt year? I mean, this guy came in out of Texas. He was one of the top running backs in texas he fell you know because he, he transferred and didn't play well he had some trouble so this guy yeah. you know had all the put he's one of these guys right has all the potential in the world and you know they can either break good or break bad and you know so far we have really didn't see anything from him last year but no. you know, are we still holding out hope for the uh, zach evans sighting yeah i mean look at it it's all going to be dependent on what he does in camp let's just be real <laughs> The preseason games, he's going to get snaps, and that'll matter, obviously, as well. But if he's not earning the trust of Coach McVay, then who gives a crap how talented he is? That's really that's really the matter of a fact on being on any – being in any role on this offense, right? Can you be trusted when you're out there? And they did not trust him. Yet we obviously seen the talent coming out of Ole Miss, right? We saw the burst. We saw the acceleration. We've seen it in flashes in preseason last year. But he cannot be trusted – with the playbook, you know, quote unquote, and then obviously in the blocking service of protecting the quarterback, he was unreliable. So if those things don't change, then nothing will change for his playing time. But if he improves in those areas, we definitely could see him in the rotation because to Paul's point, and we need we need as many running backs as possible. Because I'm sorry, I love Kyron, but damn, two years in a row, you're missing significant time. Not good. You've only been in the league two years, everybody. That's not great. Ronnie, he's been out, you know, he's barely getting a chance. He had, a, you know, a serious injury. He missed time. Not great. And then we have, you know, uh, an Evans, who I just said, you know, the coaching staff did not trust him. So, again. So everybody's in agreement. We're going to go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, no. Again, it's, it's just, it's all going to be about trust. But I still think we draft somebody anyway. We need to. That position gets too injured and things can go into the hellhole fast if, you know, all these guys get hurt again. Yeah, and I mean they drafted Kyron when there was still a perceived, you know, somewhat of a need, and they, so they dropped all the way down to the fourth round, right? They went went all out for a running back. I think yeah, they do like I their, know. I think they do like their sixth and seventh round running backs. Um, so yeah, we're all do. in agreement uh, that they're going to draft a running back. I mean, Mark, I mean your special assistant says absolutely, positively draft a running back every year, right? Yeah, and the Rams have followed that pattern for the most part, and uh, again, it. When we talk about all these position groups, we're gonna have a running theme here, uh, at least from my perspective. I'm okay with what we got. <laughs> we, uh, every position group, I would not be heartbroken if we didn't draft a- in any of these positions. But kind of offense only. Offense, yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I still think you know you try to add a running back every year. Um, yeah. It's just a it's just a good. Um, it's just a good thing to do, a smart thing to do, because as you guys have already mentioned, they get banged up, they get hurt. It's, you know, one of the toughest positions to play physically in the NFL. And uh, sure. And uh, hey, I just wanted to add one note on Zach Evans. Another thing, as far as the trust issue, he did have his draft profile did note that he had a fumbling issue and that could be part of it as well. Yeah. Yeah, and what's interesting if you look if you go back to Cam Akers and you look at the running back room now, 
it, it looks like the Rams are committed to a very distinct profile of type of running back in terms of size and skill set. And if you take a look at the commonality between Williams, Rivers, and Evans in terms of their size and everything else. So it looks like they have a particular profile that they are most comfortable with in the running back room, which is really, really interesting to me. Um, but, yeah, and it's, it's going to be interesting. It's also a, a, an emerging profile after the uh, Todd Gurley dead cap hit, even though he did have a few good years, a couple of good years for us in the Cam Akers yeah. debacle, first and second round picks. That um, yeah, they're uh, definitely viewing the right in line with the rest of the league, viewing uh, the running back as a, um, a devalued asset, and and going after um, you know guys in the later rounds, and having a feeling like they can get a Pacheco or somebody like that, and they can do almost as good of a job as an early round guy. So I mean, what, college, I mean, what college did Pacheco go to, Tom? Uh, uh, somewhere in New Jersey. Uh, Mark, right, what college was that? Records. I thought it was Princeton, New Jersey, it's, right? <laughs> Rutgers guy. Um, so, uh, okay, moving on to wide receiver. So let's throw up that. Dum, dum, uh, dum. The controversial group for whatever reason. Let's see here. <laughs> Next slide. Um, okay, a wide receiver group. All right. Okay, so we got Cup, Nakua, and Demarcus Robinson. That was, you know, with a healthy Cup and uh, Nakua, et cetera. I mean, you know. And then we got Atwell, Skoranek. They brought back Tyler Johnson. Remember, he had a great preseason last year. A mm. lot of people thought he was going to make the 53. Um, and, uh, yeah, he just really, really stood out. And then and then Xavier Smith, um, you know, who also had a good uh, camp, I would say, more than preseason. Um, he just didn't get a lot of snaps. But so I have a specific question for each of you, and then we'll go on into the bigger picture and so forth. So. Um, Okay, I'll start with uh, Ian. <clears throat> Does Cooper Cup have a bona fide bounce back year as Puka Nakua has suggested he may? What, what are we qualifying as a bounce back? What what is that? What I is mean, that? What is know, that a, bar a, for him? It's coming triplet. healthy and vintage cup, right? I'm not saying he's going to win the triple crown again or whatever, but yeah, yeah. legitimate number one wide receiver, you know, along with like his productivity was you know it, it, back in the day right I mean, he's been injured for two years yeah. so essentially yeah. if he's if he's healthy we'll assume he's going to have a bounce back year so maybe a better question is does cup stay healthy and have a productive year cup cooper cup style i mean i'm gonna based on this recent history i mean how can you how can you say how can you say yes i think he doesn't truthfully i mean i'm just being objective about it i don't wish that i don't hope for that but i mean guys I mean, he's he's had season-ending injuries or or injuries that have affected his season almost, almost half his career, right? We think 2018, the torn ACL, we probably win the Super Bowl if he played, but that's a, that's in an alternate universe where we didn't get to experience that. Sad. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I wish we did. Then we go 2019. It was like, okay, this is what we missed in that playoff run to win the championship. It was awesome. 2020, he gets injured in the wild card game. I forgot what exactly was wrong with his knee. I forgot it was some weird injury. And then he can't play in round two. If he plays in round two, we have a good chance to beat the Packers, but wasn't available. 2021 is historic. We win a championship. Shocker, right? And then 2022, he has the tightrope surgery on his ankle. He snaps his ankle, you know, all the ligaments and that, and it was awful. He missed the rest of the season. No bueno. Last season, hamstring, ankle again knee here and there and then he's just not the same so based off all this recent history guys since he's been around how can i objectively say that he's going to be 100 percent healthy and be back to his full capacity i just can't i don't wish that again i hope i am wrong and he is triple crown cup again we need it but you know puka naku is the go-to guy now he was the go-to guy all of last year and he was able to withstand and hold up to that mantle of a number one receiver so i think the times are changing P uh, puka will be the feature guy now yes will mcveigh call plays for cup of course cup is still an awesome route runner but is he going to be this oh my god we can't stop him like 2021 i think that i think that moment happened that season happened and it's not going to return you know the wrong side of 30 for receivers is real just like running backs there's few and far that have been able to conquer that, right? Maybe a Bruce, maybe a Holt in Rams history. 
that's they're Hall of Famers, and the Hall of Famers are the only ones that seem to be able to advance and be good past 30. So long story short, no, and I don't like saying that. Yeah, Holt's still a Hall of Fame snub, unfortunately. He keeps making the finals every year, but he'll get in yeah. hopefully one of these years. Um, yeah. Okay, next question to <clears throat> Mark. Does Puka keep it rolling? Does he continue his, his just dominance um, going into a sophomore season? Well, I think that's going to be a, a function of how much Cup contributes. Um, but I think he will. He, he, his numbers may actually be slightly off compared to last year, and I don't think that would be necessarily a bad thing. But he's going to continue contributing at a very high level, I think. I don't expect him to necessarily match those numbers, though, and I don't think uh, uh, I don't think that should be. A, I don't think it's a fair expectation. It's not going to be a sophomore jinx, nothing like that. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be. Uh, he sounds like he's very confident and very eager to to improve upon his performance last year. And yep. I think he will. Numbers wise, who knows? Probably be a little bit off. I can't expect him to really match that year two. Right. Yeah, that's tough. And <clears throat> Paul, next question. Demarcus Robinson, who's really been our first legitimate number three receiver, even though it was only for you know part of the season where he, they really just featured him at the end. And he was so he was so productive. And yeah. you know, does Paul, does Demarcus Robinson continue to make a difference and how much you know in terms of uh, staff seems to love him i mean talk about demarcus they brought him back seems like it was important it was one of their first signings talk about the importance of demarcus robinson in this offense uh, two words robert woods right very similar type of dynamic on this team i mean the two different two different players i mean robert woods is one-on-one -on -one, man that kid that dude was just um awesome but you know, look at the difference in the offense when Demarcus Robinson hit the hit the field, right? It was a legitimate number three uh, threat. So, and when you do take a look at you know the questions that were posed uh, just before that one, I think last year was tough because I don't think they had time to really define the roles for the receivers, right? Robinson got into the starting lineup at pretty much past the halfway point, right? Uh, yeah. Nobody was expecting Nakua to break out except for you know, so. Um, and then of course Cup was coming back from Cup, Cup was coming back from the injury. So I think here's the here's here's the thing first thing about Cup. If I could comment about Cup, then I'll sure. go back to DR. Is that the one thing that was missing last year from Cup is that that explosiveness at the top of the routes. That's what made him special. On um, those choice routes, when it was time to make a decision, he came out of those cuts. There was no loss. No loss of speed. It was just complete acceleration out of that. And that's what made him unstoppable. And that's yeah. what he's, they're trying to, I guess, uh, get him back to. So that that's number one. Number two is that his role might have to be refined a little bit. That's all. Because one of the things that really stood out to me last year, they had a hard time getting the Rock to Cup and the Kuhn games. Right? It was either one had a great game and the other was silent. And that's not, that's yeah. not a good way to approach yeah. it. The one thing in Cup's favor is that Nakua is such a vicious and willing blocker. That's going to save a lot of the wear and tear that on Cup, hopefully, so that he won't have to do a lot of that. Robinson is yeah. also – that's the other thing about DeMarcus. People sleep on the fact that that kid can block, man. DeMarcus Robinson yeah, block, can block, block. Yeah. and he wants to block. So you have two receivers that can take a little bit of that wear and tear off of Cup. So the Rams have to really balance it. So that all three of these players get a chance to really uh, have a chance to cut into the defense. And I think that's really so I think having an opportunity to have all three players in a full camp, full offseason to prepare, define their roles, have them work their way into the to the system, I think is going to be huge for the Rams. I also think, look. This Tyler Johnson signing was a really smart move on the Rams' part. That kid definitely did show a lot to me last year. I, I think it's going to be – it's going to pay huge dividends. You got the Sko man. You know, he does his thing, right, a fullback in wide receiver jersey, right? He loves to throw the body around. I mean, you always love a player like that. I definitely think within the first three rounds, the Rams are going to go after a wide receiver that they really like. No question about it. They're going to round – you know, so look, you got you got Xavier Smith. Xavier Smith was signed because of punt return duty. That's why he made the roster. 
is kick return duties. Um, and I think, you know, the Rams are going to have to make a decision on two, two. This is, you know, this is the, you know, final uh, hurrah for this kid. They're and, and, Paul, real quick. And, and Paul, I think Tutu can play. I mean, p- feel free to chime in, yeah. please, anybody. I mean, I think he could play. It's just the, the the problem with him is that he's just small. He's it's he's small. That's literally the issue because he can. Was it, how, how much fun was it to watch him block though? Because everybody has to block a, as a wide receiver, and he it can was seal so people fun off. to watch him he fly into it. the blocks. Yeah, it was great. And he could do it. Was it was it Demarcus Robinson level? Of course not, because that's a size issue. <laughs> right. That's literally yeah. Tutu's issue is that he is small. That is why he is not touching the field more. It's unfortunate because I think he can play. He has. Route running ability. He's not Tavon Austin where the route tree was limited. He is not Tavon Austin where he was not crispy in routes or he was only fast once he had the ball in his hands. Tutu is fast all the time and he can run routes and he can block to a, to a decent degree. But again, the size issue is what is holding him back from cracking this lineup. And I think he's going to get traded. I think he's going to get I traded. Think so. I think he's going to get traded. Get traded. Draft day. He's going to get traded before week four easily because I think we're. And I think we're drafting. I think we're drafting receivers in around uh, one, two, or three. It's happening. There's too many yeah. good ones. There's too many bigger body guys. Too much there's value. Not, Way just, too much value. There's just guys who are screaming to be in a McVay offense and in, in different roles who could fill in the cooler role, fill a cup role, or Robinson, or even a two-two for the speed. And uh, I think Tutu's gone just like Van was, you know, before whenever that was, week four, week five, two, yeah, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's, well, it's one, unfortunate, one, but this is reality. One quick thing. One quick thing about Tutu Atwell, which always sort of cuts me deep because Creed Humphrey was there, but I, I won't keep bringing that up. I know. But <laughs> when Tutu when Tutu Atwell was drafted, a lot of because I remember his profile. You know who led the country in splash plays? Tutu Atwell. When he yeah. when he was actually picked, he led the country in number of plays, fifteen yards or more, uh, when he got drafted that year. So, in in like small doses, if he can do that, which is I think what the Rams had envisioned for him, you know, to be that four receiver that when he hits the field, let's go vertical, let's take it to the house, that type. So to I mean, find he did that, that last least, year, right? He did that last year, didn't he but not with enough and, consistency. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean not, he was a spot player for sure, but yeah. at one point he had some statistics. He was leading the league and touchdown reception yardage or I don't know. That's what he did in Louisville, right? Yeah. So yeah. the the one thing I will say for Ram Nation, look at the yellow and one word and Stafford smiling from ear to ear, clutch. You got three wide receivers that at any given down, third down, fourth down, whatever it is, look at the yellow. Would you hesitate to throw it to any one of these three? D-Rob, Cup, Nakua. That's, that is something that the Rams have – the starting three right here, they are clutch. They can move the chains. They can put it into the end zone when they need to. I think the three of them healthy to start the season. Man, the I mean, McVay has to get the team's uh, team rolling, get the, his act together. Do not let up from Jump Street. From week one, try to accumulate as many wins as possible so that you can keep the team fresh down the stretch. The, the NFC West is there for the taking. Smash them in the mouth early. That's it. And take yeah. that um, division early. And, I mean, I look at the, the starting three, man. Wow. Stafford is going to have a field day. He better. And real quick, just to add to just to add real quick about the drafting. Guys, Robinson, Atwell, and Skoranek are all on expiring contracts. You think we're not drafting a receiver in rounds one, two, or three? You're crazy. Cup, if he doesn't perform well, they'll get rid of him because we're a savage organization. We'll get rid of anybody, no matter what you've done for us. Let's just keep let's just keep it a buck. So we're drafting a receiver in rounds one, two, or three. It's happening. It's happening. And Ram Nation, so, just just take a look at the videos of Cup and Nakua working out together. Tell me they don't look serious. They got business on their mind. They're going to take care good. of business. I'm happy about that. Yeah, Mark. I wanted to. You know, this is the this 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 receiver group is. Gives me the biggest, you know, as it relates to the draft, the biggest kind of uh, uh, quandary is is uh, this year we look like we're set, right? We got a one, two, and a three. We got some legitimate backups. Um, is a rookie really going to step in? And you know, we're going to get another Nakua, and you know, really going to step in and and be that kind of a guy? Um, or or so. In other words, 
we're talking about for like from quarterbacks perspective, like we need to focus on our better picks in terms of filling in this year to go for it. Right. We don't know how long cup is going to be healthy or Stafford and some of these other guys, right. We got to push the chips in. And so you don't start drafting for the future, but on the other hand, like Ian mentions this particular position group that has three legitimate and has all the starters penciled in also next year, you know, is in dire need of help. So where do you, where does the Rams go from here in this draft on the wide receiver room? That's for me. Um, yeah. You know, I was averse to drafting a wide receiver early, but this team is so reliant. It's going to be reliant on, on putting a lot of points up on the board, just kind of like what we thought was going to happen last year. It didn't really play out that way. No. But, you know, I've seen people uh, on, on the Internet, social media, and I think maybe a couple of you guys, I'm not even sure I've, I've heard this various places. You know, let's just put 40 points up every game and we'll be good. <laughs> and what, uh... this team, this team really could. But, you know, if, you know, if some one of these receivers go down, goes down, it changes everything. Right. So I don't have a problem with drafting a wide receiver early. I'm not, you know, um, could we should we package picks and move up and get. Roma Dunze, perhaps, or do we hang back and and maybe move up in the second round to get Lad McConkey? Um, then there's the guys. Uh, you know, Paul and I have talked about a few, you know, third and fourth round wide receivers. There are some guys there, yeah. So uh, I I think you might be right. We might need to add a receiver for insurance this year because after those front three, those top three, I don't know. And, you know, Cup, it, Cup's career may be winding down, sorry to say. Guys, we made an offer to Mike Evans not too long ago. Does everyone remember that? I know he, I know he signed, you know, quickly because Buccaneers gave him a lot of money. But we were confirmed to have made an offer to Mike Evans. Receivers on, on our minds. I mean, let's just be, come on. <laughs> yeah, and, and I will yeah. add one other thing, you know. That guy maybe we should burnt the Rams when they played him. So yeah. He's, yeah. he's awesome, man. He's one of the best receivers <laughs> of his generation, for sure. I don't think that's a debate. Yeah, he's a, 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 thousand, a thousand yard receiver for hire. I, I did want to add that's one thing. Cool. You know, I'm not opposed to trading 2-2, but could he be the answer in the punt return, kickoff return game now that they've, especially the kickoff return game since they, now that they've changed the rules. And I know He's probably going to get hurt the first time he gets popped, but that may be the Rams thinking. Gotcha. Uh, all right, let's move on to our last offensive or our last offensive uh, position group, offensive line. So, I mean, this is as good as the offensive line has looked going into a season. I think it even looks better than twenty one. I mean, you know, obviously we oh had easily. Ones. We had big wit there, but I mean, at that year, we, what was it, Corbett, and and it was Allen, and we had uh, uh, who was the other guard that he ended up going yeah, Edwards and Edwards. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and you know, Havenstein. So, I mean, these are the guys, and and so I feel like this is a big, it's a much bigger line. The Rams have realized like we need some girth, right? We're not, we don't need to be this this small little, you know, nimble group to get, you know, out on the outside zone scheme and yeah. let's, let's commit to some gap and so forth. So, um, so we got, you know, Alaric Jackson, Jonah Jackson, you know, signed over in free agency, Steve Avila, uh, Kevin Dotson, Rob Havenstein. So three specific questions, and then we'll get into the bigger, uh, the bigger uh, conversation. So, uh, so I'll start with Paul, <clears throat> Paul specifically, the guys that came in last year that made such a difference, right? Steve Avila, our, our second round draft pick, and Kevin Dotson, a we got for a, you know a bag of peanuts from from uh, from the Steelers. Thank so you, Pittsburgh. Guys, thank yeah, you Pittsburgh. thank you. Yeah, we, we, we tip our hat to Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, so do they? They were said made such a difference for us last year. Obviously, on this offensive line. So, but the question is, it was their first year with the Rams, right? They wildly out you know performed their their even avila you know coming in as a as a solid draft pick right so my question is do avila and dotson keep it up do they continue their essential dominance at their positions even with avila moving to center 
Yeah, I, I think they do. I think they do. Um, I was surprised that they moved Avila to center. I thought they would have gone and brought in a veteran center or invested heavily in the center, leave Avila where he was. But either way, it, Big Steve's going to be able to handle it. He's played it before. It's a no-brainer for him. Um, I think that when you, when you just look at this line, and just to point something out, what were the two positions on the O-line that the Rams traditionally never spent money? Guard. We talked about it for how many years? It's been a real shift for the Rams. What's the other position? Safety. The Rams spend money on safety this year. So it's a very interesting shift when you take a look at the way the Rams attack yeah. this season. And I think it's really, really interesting. Uh, you know, all championship teams, regardless of sport, they say the same thing. First thing in every coaching clinic they teach you, you build up the middle. And that's exactly what the Rams did. They went back to Dotson. The- Dotson makes it, he stays with his, he continues yeah. his, his form. On the right side, with the Havistein. Yeah, absolutely. Look, no, look on either face. side of him. The Havistein monster on one side, and you got Big Steve on the other. Yeah. Man, that gives you a lot of room for error. Not that he's, you know, he's going to, his play is going to drop off. I think his play is going to be. So, number one, he's got job security now, right? He's got the contract, right? They're, he knows that the Rams are going all in. So I think, in my opinion, he's got familiarity with the system now. All arrows are pointing up, in my opinion. Absolutely. So for me, the right side of the Rams line is really my comfort zone. If I were, you know, the OC for the Rams, that's my comfort zone right there. Center to the right. Not that there's anything wrong with Jackson, you know, the Jack, uh, the Jackson two on the other side. But what I'm saying is that if you look at this right side, that looks rock solid to me. I think Dotson's going to have another Pro Bowl year. Mark, how much does Jonah Jackson add to this offensive line? Well, you know, obviously the Rams are familiar with him. They saw him. Um, well, actually, they didn't get to play against him in the playoff game, but Stafford's familiar with him. He seems like a great get, you know. It's just what they needed, one more interior offensive lineman. And, man, this I, – I was talking to some uh, friends at work. I was trying to explain to them that the Rams have the best – interior offensive line in the league that could be bluster but they're probably top three or four and they just waved me off oh you're just a ram homer you don't yeah sure whatever but i really think it might be true you know um but yeah adding jonah jackson it just yeah i feel really good about that and huge huge individual yeah and and the the dotson trade that that's payback for the jerome bettis trade take that (laughs) steeler fans that's the first thing that popped in my mind too (laughs) <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> Next question to Ian. We haven't, t- let's talk about this depth. Is the depth good enough? We got no boom who's still on him. You know, he took a little bit of a pay cut. I think he's down to 6 million or something just to, which is what he would have gotten if they had cut him. So he just basically take the same amount of money to stay on the team. Yeah. And then a bunch of dudes, right? I mean, all of these guys have no way you know, of saying showed, it. <laughs> yeah, showed up every now and then. Like, okay, Grant Miller showed up. Zach Thomas showed up. McClendon kind of yeah. maybe, you know, just a new draft pick. Logan Bruss hasn't shown up. Um, and oh, McCaster. So, uh, so, so do we have – what about the depth on this on this offensive line? So, no boom's a starter, right? But he's not a starter on this team. <laughs> but every time he is spot starting, it's good. Right, that we, we I don't think that's debatable either. So that's nice, right? To be your sixth man on the O line who can play guard or tackle on either side, which is I mean that's every coach's or offensive line room's dream is that sixth man to be able to play anywhere and be quality. Yeah, that, so that swing, nope, boom, the swing guard, swing tackle. tackle. Yeah. I, I was blanking on the name right now. Thank you. But outside of that. I mean, we've seen Thomas eat it on Monday Night Football terribly. We've seen Bruss get bodied by third stringers in preseason football. McClendon, McAllister, and Miller are all unproven. Could they be a good? Who knows? We'll find out. And then, again, in camp, that'll tell a lot with how much they're playing. And if, you know, McVay's comments in press conference, oh, we need to see more from these guys. Because, you know, those things will be asked appropriately by our reporters who ask good questions, I think, most, most days. And right now... Outside of no boom, again, the depth is not good, which is why we're meeting with a Fuwaga from Oregon State, who is a mauler in the run game. Why we are meeting with Barnhart at Michigan, who is a no boom S type of player who played everywhere on the Michigan O line. Why we're meeting with the Washington off the tackle, Troy Fountainew. 
So we're meeting with quality guys, not on, you know, not just because, hey, let's just meet with these dudes for fun. These are guys who have all played in a gap scheme run game who are big, nasty offensive linemen. So I think the Rams are aware that the depth ain't where it needs to be. So, again, for me, not good enough. We need to address it, just like a lot of other spots, I feel. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, the depth is uh, pretty questionable. A lot of blue, yeah. not a lot of uh, blue chip. Just yeah, that's better. correct. And again, look at everyone on, everyone on YouTube. Just pay attention to all the the yellow highlight starters, and obviously uh, orange for Jackson uh, Jonah Jackson being the free agent acquisition. What a great old line! But if any one of those guys go out, right? No boom slide in. How about one more goes out? How screwed are we with this current group right here? We're in bad shape. Let's just keep it real. <sighs> so let's hopefully uh, we get some quality linemen in, in this uh, upcoming draft or a free agent signing, a post June cut, right? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, good stuff. And then, so in terms of drafting, where are we at, Paul? Where, where, what pick of ours are we moving to back up O line? Well, I think the Rams are lucky. I mean, there are, there are a lot of, particularly at center, there are some really, really like uh, you know Tanner Bartolini's one that really stands out for me. Uh, the kid from Penn State stands out for me. Uh, all those guys can play center and uh, guard as well. So I think they can go young. I don't. I think they are going to supplement what whoever they draft with a veteran. There's no question about it. You have to, particularly in, in this day and age. The Rams are highly dependent on their O line, just like any other team. The Rams throw the ball a ton. To, to play on the Rams O line, I think a lot of the Rams O line don't get a fair shake. It is really tough to play in the Rams scheme. They throw the ball a ton, right? When they do run it, it's not with a lot of consistency. So it makes it very hard on the O lineman. Just ask any O lineman, right? So they've invested a lot of money with run blocking types, which I think is interesting. Think about their signings. These are run blocking types. So, you know, the signings say we're going to run the rock. You know, we'll see how the play calling follows. But, you know, they're also going to throw the ball. I mean, everything everything is lining up like they're going to go for balance, a balanced attack, a balanced attack, which I think would be great for the Rams, right? Yeah. And then you just turn it up in the playoffs. You just turn it up to 11 in the playoffs, right, and, and let Stafford do his thing. But, you know, I think the Rams definitely have to improve their depth because, you know, the depth here is beyond questionable. It is really, really, it's really shaky. Ian, Ian was uh, respectful to our backups. It's shaky to say the least. Uh, McClendon is, you know, he's a good prospect, came out of Georgia. He was a swing player. He could play guard, tackle. Um, Bruss, we know, is trying to, like, salvage his career after that, that injury. Um, Zach Thomas, I won't comment on. I mean, I hope the kid turns it around, but, I mean, that was scary. When he was out there, <laughs> so yeah, I think a good, a good, a good, a good IOL interior O lineman with a veteran that can handle maybe the two interior slots, center if they need to. I think would be the perfect signing for the Rams in phase two, phase three. Supplement that with some quality draft picks. You know, I think one sleeper is uh, the kid that we had drafted a while, AJ uh, Curry from uh, Michigan State, man. I'd love to see that kid get a little bit more burn, see what he can do. He's been. Oh, I left him off of this, bit. didn't I? But I would, I would love to see. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree. I would love to see him get some burn. Uh, I remember when they picked him. Um, he's got the size. You know, he's been in the system for a little bit. Let's see what he can do. Uh, I think you know, there's no uh, downside to that. But I think that's the way the Rams should attack it. Play it smart. And one veteran signing supplemented by maybe one or two uh, drafted players. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anything else to add, guys? Offensive line? Oh, man. I mean, if this group stays healthy, I mean, it should be a top five unit. There's just no question. I mean, it's, it's, there's no excuse for it not to be. How about that? It's just – I'll be upset if they're anything less, uh, truthfully. The money that's invested in this group from Havenstein to Dotson to Jackson – John Jackson, excuse me, and then the you know the the young prowess of Steve uh, Avila, and then obviously Jackson being serviceable. There's just no excuse for this unit not to be top five. Yeah, there was a, a lot of film last year of uh, Avila at the guard position picking off secondary uh, yeah pass rushers for his for his buddies, 
And yeah. at the center position, I think he maybe have even more opportunities to do that. So I'm looking forward to that. He's got a little bit of nastiness in him when it comes to that stuff. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to be. There's going to be a lot of pancakes going on. Uh, a lot of pancakes being handed out by the big dog. But one thing that stands out on this O line, gentlemen, I don't know if you agree, man. But look at the leadership on this line. I think Alaric showed me a lot over the last two seasons. He was outspoken. He backed up what he said. Right. He he's look yeah. at. Him. He's in the starting lineup. Listen, he called everybody out. He said, "Stop running these guys out there." When I'm standing right here, give me a shot, and he backed it up. You yeah, know, you got you got proven guards on both sides. You got the Havenstein monster. I mean, Havenstein, just did you guys see him at the press conference? Man, cool as a cucumber, knew the right thing to say. You know, you talk about a veteran, and you know, and big Steve in the middle just fits right in. The leadership across this line, once this unit gels, right? Because they're playing together as a unit for the first yeah. time. Once this unit gels, this offense is going to be off the chart it's going to be like 99 all over again yeah and you compare this uh compare this offensive line to the 49ers offensive line it's quite a contrast and it hopefully like we've always said i you know ram nation this is this is you know my you know i'll I'll say it till you know i get blue in the face t-o-p rams control the time of possession it's a wrap game over yeah, it needs to be that way. You know, it's killing two birds with one stone. We can demoralize our defensive opponent and then protect Stafford as well. And the play action will be better. It's it's, it's multi layered of why that's a good idea, Paul. So hopefully, Coach McVay doesn't have the beginning of the season whack play calling like he did this last year, which was <laughs> killing me, killing me. So we'll we'll see. He gets just just get a little bit in his own head. So yeah. um, I want to uh, we're. Gonna, Next question, surprise question, not on the board. We're going to take down the uh, take down the depth chart. And so somebody mentioned this earlier, but I want you all to think of it. I'm going to ask a question, write down your answer, no changing it as we go through the, the answers, right? So who is going to be the kickoff returner for the Rams? Next year, in this new kickoff scheme, which, you know, for people, you guys, people not listening, you know, people that aren't familiar with it, it's kind of a similar, very similar to what the XFL did and the UFL is doing this year. Um, there's a, some slight changes, but essentially the offense and defensive line line up, you know, around the 25 yard line and the kick returner receives the ball. He, nobody can move until he touches it. And then it's like a running play where the guy's getting maybe, you know, an extra five yards of, of start time to run the ball. So it's not like the old, you know, running kickoff returner with he has this huge amount of time to pick where he's going and so forth and so on. It's much more like a running back running play, right? That's how I would describe it. Um, with an offensive line, a defensive line, we're going to see – we won't get into all the details of how those uh, 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 special teams units are going to change on the kickoff, but they will. You're not just going to run out your normal special teams guys anymore. Um, yeah. But anyway, having said that, everybody, I want you to pick, given that you know kind of a lead up of what this is like, who is the ideal guy on the Rams roster currently to be the guy who would be your pick? at least to give him first shot or who you think could be more most successful or is there nobody on the team and we got to find another guy. Okay. I'll give you a couple, a couple seconds to figure out your, uh, your answer. If you're ready, go ahead and chime in, give the other guys a chance to think. Well, I feel like uh, we're on I'll, final jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously going to be, they're going to resign Austin Trammell and, He'll be the guy. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it, I can, uh, I'm, I'm going to cheat. I think if it's a guy on the roster, the way you described it, it might be Ronnie Rivers. Uh, if okay. it's, uh, oh, yeah. But but it's very likely. I don't know if you give that job to a rookie. I hate it when you give it to a rookie. So I, I'm going to roll with Ronnie Rivers. Ronnie Rivers. Who said 2-2 earlier, though? 
That was I was weird. talking about two two, but the way you described it, I haven't given it a lot of thought. Okay, gotcha. You, you you describe it as as the way you described it and characterized it. I changed my mind. Yeah, it is a little bit more of a. It is definitely more of a, uh, a running back oriented kind of a, a look. Um, looking for holes. There, you know, there's schemes on the yeah. blocking and the whole nine yards. Okay, Ian, do you have a guy? Yeah, I was I was gonna go with Ronnie Rivers, but I don't think it'll be him at the end of the day. So I guess I'm cheating as well. If somebody if I had to choose somebody on the roster right now, I'm choosing Ronnie Rivers because based on things that have been said about how this is gonna unfold with this kick return, is that there's gonna be a lot of pulling guards, quote unquote, right? There's gonna be a lot of lead blocking right. run esque looks. And yes. to your point earlier, Tom, I mean, I think running backs will be best suited for that, right? The vision to be able to fully follow your lead blockers, right, on the kick return in this new format. So I think it'll, if there had to be somebody, it would probably be him. But I truthfully think that there'll be somebody that is specialty drafted in our draft that could probably fill that role because that is going to be a unique role that's going to have to be sought after, identified, and then hopefully drafted and or signed in free agency. So Ronnie Rivers for current, but I think somebody that gets drafted is going to fill that role, truthfully. So you think, gotcha. Paul, what's yeah. your thoughts? I think the other aspect of these kickoff returns is about field position too. So even if they don't take it to the house, you got to establish field position. So I agree. I think you're going to see a lot of these running back types, smaller running back types, uh, what we used to call all-purpose backs, now have a more elevated role. Right. So I think I think the Rams are definitely going to draft another running back, particularly with that in mind, and also the ability to. I think right now I would go with. Uh, I think Zach Evans. I give him a shot. I give him a shot to win that win that um, win that spot. I think um, McVeigh has shown that he's not going to take a chance at anybody that's even a fringe starter uh, on special teams to get hurt. And if he's going to give it yeah. to somebody, the closest person I can see who has the experience and who has done it before and has the explosiveness is that kid. And it's worth the shot to see what he has, especially if you're going to bring in another running back anyway. Um, it's you know no real threat to the depth chart. So that's probably the way. But I do think they're going to draft somebody particularly in mind. And shout out to Dylan Lowby from Long Island. Hopefully he winds up in horns. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I have to echo exactly your sentiments, but you took the words right out of my mouth. I had Zach Evans written down for those exact same reasons. Like give the guy a shot to, to contribute something. You know, he's probably not going to see the field a lot this year um, in yeah. scrimmage plays. And, uh, and the other thing is, I mean, you've got to believe it's fresh in their mind that, that Iron Kyron got hurt on the first kickoff return uh year before last, right? His rookie year. He goes down as a kickoff returner and could not, you know, have any kind of a year that year and then comes back this year. So I think all of those things are in play for the Rams. We're not going to risk anybody. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just not going to happen. So I think it'll be a Zach Evans or like you guys say, somebody that uh um you know that that they draft, but I I don't think it's going to be one of these receivers. I just don't think that 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 this kickoff return play is suited for one of those guys um, to try and read a hole. I mean, I was thinking Skoranek because mm -hmm. you know he's played and he's fullback. done it before. Yeah, he's played that fullback role, and he's you know like to your point, uh, Paul. He might be able to get you know on an average an extra three yards or something like that, but he just doesn't have that breakaway speed. And I do believe that in this uh, in this particular scheme we are going to see a lot of guys breaking through those lot those holes and there's oh, just yeah. aren't a lot of guys you know there's no secondary per se in, the, in this in this yeah. deal right i mean you got a bunch of dudes up on a line of scrimmage within a five yard thing and you can't you don't have free safeties you know you got your kicker back there another thing that you know i was thinking about and i, I had i had heard this as well is that the kicker might not be the kicker right the kicker might be find your best safety or cornerback or whatever linebacker that can kick a ball 45 yards. You know, it doesn't matter how high it is. You don't need air time to get, to get guys down the field. It could be a, it could be a line drive for all he matter. Right? As long as it goes in the air and lands in the, you know, this reception zone that they yeah. call it. And, um, so, yeah, but, I mean, I'm telling you right now, you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff. You're going to find some dudes in the cornerback group and the safety group, in particular linebacker group, that can kick the ball a, a, a long way, right? There certainly could never be a kicker or a, or a you know, a, a kickoff guy 
because they can't get it high enough and long enough in the current, you know, the old NF, in the old rules. Um, or they certainly can't be like a, you know, kick a field goal. Maybe in a pinch they could. Maybe they're like the backup, backup, backup guy. Yeah, but I think yeah. that's going to happen because that guy is going to be really important, and those kickers can't tackle worth a shit, as we know. Yeah, that's so, true, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see. And, yeah, I think people are going to start looking at those guys going, you know, hey, we're looking at a couple of safeties to bring in. Any chance you can kick? So anyway, something to think about. That's what I think. That's why there's been so many, so much interest in the NFL about these rugby players. Oh uh, yeah, because they because they can kick, they can tackle, they can also run it back. They can, and they're they, used, yeah. they're used yeah, to running through uh, yeah a they're crowd. So that's why I think there's been so much interest in the in the rugby style player that there've been uh, a lot of teams have been trying to audition. So it makes a lot of sense. That's a good point. It does make a lot of sense. I really, I really thought there if the if the NFL really wanted to juice up the scoring and make it exciting, they should have turned the kickoffs into uh, free kicks. Let the punters actually do a little bit more because you only see them three times a game. Let you turn the kickoffs into free kicks. That would have been exciting. Well, it depends that would have been. Are if you're, uh, you know. I don't know what who, who punted a lot last year. <laughs> some some punters got eight, ten punts a game. Um, depends on your Panthers, team. Panthers uh, looking at you, Panthers. Yeah, yeah, they're looking at you. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm with you, Paul. I'm with you. But you know that kickoff. I feel like the NFL, like they really, they want to preserve the skeleton. You know, they they want to pervert, preserve the bones of the game. And there's a kickoff after a touchdown and a field goal and but let's just get the thing right. And I mean, yeah. let's, before we yeah. do away with the whole damn thing, let's at least do our best to make it exciting. Yeah. I yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I don't know if this particular system achieves what they wanted. I know NFLPA was afraid about losing, and rightfully so, about losing jobs. And they were absolutely right about that. And I, I just think they could have, it, it's not in line with the trajectory of the game. Right, I understand. Like, it seems like a a quick fix at the moment. I, I think they're going to move away from this within two seasons. I think they're going to move away. I, I really do. Interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it is. Yeah, it'll be. It's it's going to be fun first year because it's going to be, it's going to be the wild west. You know, even though we do have some comps in XFL, like those dudes aren't. You know, those dudes probably be the most their... important thing to watch during the preseason. Actually, yeah. yeah how to get tackle. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, so uh, we're going to wrap it up there um, this week. Mark, uh, as our, our primary host here on Rams Up, I'm assuming that the coming week is going to be chock full of draft conversations, right? Oh, yeah. And we hopefully, uh, thus us four can get together, I'm thinking next Tuesday night for our one and only roundtable mock draft. We got to figure out the groundwork for that, how we're going to do it. But yeah. uh, hopefully you guys are available, and we'll do that Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 Heck good. Yeah. Let's, I think we might need more than one night, but we'll uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see how it rolls. Um, draft but, week twenty twenty four. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to. I just want to. We're going to. Uh, yeah, draft week, right? Uh, I do want to just make one note that I wrote made. I wrote wrote down some things over the last two roundtables about what everyone thinks our first round draft pick should be ready so here are the names that every depending <laughs> depending on the position group we were discussing these are yeah. the names that were thrown out this is who should, we should draft it with our 19th pick in the first round yeah. right <laughs> verse latu or latu whoever's there we got to get an edge in the first round that's critical we can't go into this you know, we can't go into this draft with our, you know, with with uh, with Young and whoever, right? In Hoyt. Yeah. Okay. And then it was, look at this defensive line group, guys. <laughs> like, we lost Donald and we got a lot of, you know, yeah, we got Kobe Turner and then Bobby Brown, but we, we lost Jonah Williams. We lost Marquise Copeland. We have to get a, a defensive lineman. I mean, that's critical, right? We got to replace it. You know, and so Murphy's there. Now we're talking today about about wide receiver. It's an offensive driven scheme. We got to get him the Conkey or a whoever um, in our with, you know with our early on. Um, and uh, and then at the end of the conversation today, we're talking about the O line. 
you got to get there's so many great old linemen. Go grab one. They can fill in, you know, Fashanu, Fulaga, whoever it is, right? So we got six, seven, eight guys that we've all <laughs> just beat the drum for. So no need to comment right now. Just let it sift in. We only get one pick. I want to remind you. We get one pick at number 19, not 19 point way, 19 point B <laughs> or 19 point C. So anyway, I'm done being, I'm trying to be, be facetious. I know, but, but no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a hard just, choice, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a hard choice. And then now this brings into the conversation. Do we trade back and try and get two of these guys, you know, and so forth and so on. Right. Yeah. And so uh, anyway, but I just wanted to, you know, point out, that I've been taking notes on what what we've talked about, what's top of mind in front of our face when we're looking at a position group and thinking about it. Um, but we gotta ultimately take the you know take the uh, take until next early next week, and we'll um, to think about it. What's your absolute positive drop dead if we stay at nineteen? What's our pick, or do we drop back and try and grab a couple of position groups that are starters? Um, and that's what I want you guys to think about, and then we'll dive into that next week so but uh good stuff final thoughts mark got a lot to think about got a lot to think about and if you ask me uh three times in the next 10 minutes i'll give you a different answer on what <laughs> yeah it depends on what depends on what depends, <laughs> yeah. on, depends on what slide is up on yeah, the screen but right? man just just <laughs> now paul missed it but man just just gonna remind you our reaction to looking at that defensive line depth chart it's pretty scary so it's not that's good, all man. that's all I got to say about that. But <laughs> but we there are some good defensive linemen that can be had in the second round. There are. Yeah. Paul, final thoughts. I, I think it's an exciting season. I'm really excited um because sometimes it's better to be the underdog, you know, instead of being the front runner. So I think it's an exciting season watching the puzzle pieces come together. Uh of the draft, I think um the approach should be just load up on players that can play today. Right. So you can get instant contributions. Right. Um, use the phase two, phase three of free agency in a very intelligent, purposeful way. And more importantly, if it winds up being hopefully right, a championship season, make sure Steven Jackson is at the podium when they're doing the trophy so that he can get recognized and make sure he gets a ring. There we now, go. That's I my final cool. comment. I love Shoot. it. Uh, well, what do I have to say? We don't know Jack Gidley squat <laughs> about anything, do we? We have our ideas of who we should take. We went down every position group and how good or not good it looks. But at the end of the day, we don't know what Coach McVay thinks. We don't know what Lesney thinks. We have good ideas. We just got to hope they make the right decisions. And I think that's all our fan base is hoping for, making proper and educated decisions. Please, let's try to win another Super Bowl soon. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Yeah. Great job, guys. Thanks a lot. That's a good good breakdown of the offensive group. Uh, if you missed it, go back and listen to our breakdown of the defensive uh, group and the depth chart there and where we're at and what our needs are. And uh, coming into next week, when we go into the uh, hardcore draft, I mean, Paul and Mark in particular have been holding down the fort on mock drafts, very mm -hmm. well versed in uh, in what our options are and what could happen and the different scenarios. So next week we'll get together. Mark will be leading it on the uh, draft conversations and uh, and certainly at least one, maybe two nights of mock drafts um, going into uh, leading up to next week's draft. So thanks a lot for joining us. This has been the Rams Up Roundtable and look forward to uh, <clears throat> getting with you guys next time. Full speed ahead, baby. Ram Nation. Rams 2024. Please don't make me sad. <laughs> <laughs>